This conference will now be recorded. You need to turn on the mic. Giving her a hard time and it picked up a while ago. So, hey, we'll start all over again. It is now 6.30 p.m. Thursday, October the 14th, 2021. The regular session of the Rome City Council will now begin. We are live streaming this also for those that want to pick up on that. We have a quorum here and we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's stand for that. Mayor, the invocations first. Okay, we're going to go with the invocation first. Councilman Majors, would you lead our inv invocation? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We also want to honor the Texas flag. I honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Ms. Shannon, we are ready for public presentations. Do you have anyone? Yes, ma'am, I have quite a few. First to sign up was Courtney Hoppenrath. If you could please come to the podium and state your name and address and, and turn on the mic. It's Hi, my name is Courtney Hoppenrath, and I live at 1314 uh, Prairie Point over in Ellis Homestead. My husband and I and our four children moved here um, a little over a year ago. However, my mother-in-law um, spent her childhood in Rome, and her parents both went to the high school here. So we have a um, long history of, of being involved in Rome. Um, the thing I'm concerned about today is the upcoming bond. Um, uh, it was unfortunate that I found out about it through a Facebook page that was not even associated with the city. Um, and then I went and looked at the website and I couldn't find anything. And then I looked at the Facebook page with the city and I couldn't find anything. And then I contacted the city and it wasn't until after that that something was posted on the website regarding the bond. And I feel like whenever a city is asking its residents for a bond, what they're doing is requesting more of our income than what's already been voted on to provide money for a special project that's urgent. And all I've heard about this bond is that all of the buildings in the city are deplorable, they're infested with rodents, they don't meet code for ADA or electrical, and no list of anything has been given. Are we talking about an outlet? Are we talking about handrails in a bathroom? What are we talking about that requires us to spend an extra $7 million within 600 total houses in Rome, and now that 65 and over, their taxes are frozen, and anybody who's a disabled veteran is frozen. So I don't know how many houses you're talking about, 400? That you're expecting $7 million from, for what? And is there any other option of upgrading these facilities or fixing them to bring them to compliance? And it also makes me wonder why, as a city council, with the funds that have been brought in, did you not do anything to make these buildings safe in the past? Um, why would you let your employees and your fire and your police work in an environment that was unhealthy? Um, that's worrisome to me. I also heard from a council member that there was a survey done in the past um, with the residents 
of if they wanted to keep the school. And it was overwhelming that they did not. But however, the council decided to go ahead and invest a couple hundred thousand dollars repairing a roof and removing asbestos from that building that's been vacant since the 1940s. When I'm pretty sure a couple hundred thousand dollars could have done a huge amount to improve the buildings that we already had. So why that decision was made seems really fiscally irresponsible to me. And at a time right now when we're coming out of a pandemic, your time's up. Thank you. It doesn't seem like the time to be able to do this or request this from us. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Shannon, oh, your buzzer is going off again. I know. Oh. Sorry about that. Next speaker is Shannon Jones. My name is Shannon Jones. I live on Old Mill Road. Uh, when I grew up here, I was fortunate to uh, get to work with the men that right there, Mr. Tony Dickey, who was uh, Marie's brother. Um, this last summer, I had a young man, this guy right here, Brady Peak. He helped Marie without any pay. Not just Marie, he helped some of the other elderly people in town to clean up, cutting limbs, everything else. So, Definitely want to recognize him tonight for his good work. And I know, you know, Marie's already adopted him as a grandson. So, so I, I feel like he belongs to me. <laughs> but his dad he is Chris, a good his mom kid. Jennifer, and his he grandparents are here good. as well. So, just be the tickle that we have him. <laughs> I also have a little something for him. Uh, a mutual friend of the Hollywood actor that I used to work for sent you something. She was very impressed with your work ethic. And she wanted you to have this. She wanted me to get this to you in time for the meeting. So that is from Pat Priest, who played um, Brown and Muster and Muster. She sent that to you. You're welcome, Pat. Yeah. Brady, let us see your picture. Hold it, hold it up for you. Me. You know? Next up is Tommy Eason, and she will be calling in. Tommy, when you're ready. She may be muted, Shannon. Here we go. There she goes. Tommy, we can't hear you. She appears kind of. No, close. Tommy, we can't. She's having trouble getting her audio on. Okay, I will come back to her. Next up is Lisa Ann Wilson, and she asked that I read her statement. I have lived here for over 55 years and welcome all growth, as well as other Rome citizens would. I would like to see our city have more planned retail. However, at this specific location, the lot seems too small, and there is no parking allowed on the front of that lot as well as the city making noises about requiring property owners to maintain right-of-ways and alleys. Before rezoning, let's see how that plays out. If at all possible, can the city tell us what type of retail? Also, the sign the city put out is way too small for anyone to see driving at 30, 40 miles per hour. Should rezoning be addressed by the city at any future location, please make sure the sign is large enough with large letters so as to be read from the road. There is no more deserving individual to have a building named after her. Her true friends who have known her for years realize that her dedication and civic involvement for Rome supports this dedication. As a longtime resident, I have been blessed to have lots of friends and family who visit me in my home. Recently, visitors to my home have been photographed without their consent. Recently, it has been blasted all over Facebook that I am legally blind, which is true but I do not know what this has to do with Rome politically. Thank you for your time, and please consider this statement when making a decision. Lisa Ann Wilson. Tommy, are you back? Okay, let me move on, and we'll come back. Next speaker is Patricia Mitchell.
my name is Patricia Mitchell. Uh, Sam Easton distributed signs with the disclaimer that reads, political advertisement paid for by private citizens in compliance with voluntary limits of the Judicial Campaign Fairness Act in violation of Elections Code Title 15, Section 255.001 that requires the name. The Judicial Campaign Fairness Act does not apply to bond elections. And it's still, re it's still required to ask permission before placing signs on private property without the owner's consent. Government Code 571.122. Mr. Adkins, the city signs. I'm sorry, Mr. Adkins, uh, the city paid your law firm $158,000 last year. And we're up to $116,000 this year. What say you, Counselor? Josh McKay, uh, you're not fooling anyone with your shady political stuff. You couldn't even be honest on your own campaign finance reports. Mrs. Priest, with all due respect, private citizens are limited to three minutes. If you've got something to say, cut to the chase and just say it. Vehicles bought and maintained with taxpayer funds for essential city business and services are not for the personal use of certain city employees. With more than 20% wage increases with this budget, they can use their own cars and buy their own gas, just like everyone else. Your city administrator has cost taxpayers a fortune, a few thousand dollars at a time, while the entire city is a mess. The city website alone is a disorganized maze, a navigation nightmare. You pay for more than the Wise County judge, and yes, we know he's not a real judge. He's a kind and smart man, gets the job done, and well regarded in the rest of the county. As for her personnel evaluation, the emperor has no clothes. She declared she deserves it now. Boyd City Council approved a budget of $120,000 to renovate and relocate all city departments under one roof. Their city administrator tells me the project will come in under budget at $90,000, and they plan to move in after the first of the year. You're pushing a $5,760,000 bond off the backs of financially strapped, hardworking taxpayers build this legacy city hall defeated and played ego. Thank you. Tommy? Yes. Are you ready? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm ready. Good evening to all. My name is Tommy Eason and I live at 1107 Mount Lang. I've heard a lot of different messages going out trying to discuss the bonds to everyone in the area. The reason I'm spending so much time with this is because last time we had this on the election ballot, there were a lot of half-truths and out-and-out lies being told to the citizens of this town. I did not want to go door-to-door -door then because of the COVID-19. I would like to tell a story. About three weeks ago, another person and I went to clean out the closet in the community center because it was a mess. Notice that that is the room that you are sitting in now. I got about half of the bag full of junk that needed to be thrown out, and the bag started moving. There was a rat in it. After that, I saw four more. I do not understand. It was disgusting. I personally do not understand how the fire department, the police department, or public works can work in an environment like that. You people that are going around putting up the say no banners, do you not care about the people that work in your town? Do you not care about their safety? Do you not care that a professional financial group of our city has come up and said more than once, that this is the best time for this bond? Or do you think that you know more than the professionals? I have also heard to get an exterminator in this, this would be much cheaper. The problem with this idea is that there are so many cracks in places for all the varmints to get in that it would not matter how many times the exterminator came in, it would not stop. All of our city workplaces are not ADA compliant, electrical compliant, or plumbing compliant. What is the city going to do if one person comes to one of the offices and gets hurt because of this horrendous negligence? All it will take is one person calling with a complaint. Then the city is in jeopardy of being sued. Then what? I know people have different opinions and that does not make us enemies. I just would like one of these people that have the no 
to the bond to come up with a better option because the mayor emeritus and the council worked very hard for about four years to come up with the cheapest and most value for the buck. I have not heard any other realistic uh, suggestions that include safety of all our citizens. Please start making your suggestions known if you do not agree. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. The last speaker is Kathy Coffey, and she's also calling in. Kathy, when you're ready. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. My name is Kathy Coffey, and I live on Mount Lane. The following are my opinions as a private citizen. The former mayor and council put a lot of hard work to get Rome to a place to move forward, and it was a long process. We now have plans and goals to improve the city. I understand some, some complaints about the high taxes. However, the majority of that has nothing to do with Rome. It's the county and Northwest ISD taxes and the appraisals of your house. Rome maintains one of the lowest tax rates in Rice County. The vote no proposition A on the November ballot to me says we don't care what kind of conditions our police and fire departments must work in. Let's just keep renting the city hall building instead of putting that money toward paying off the bond early. I want to apologize to one of our longtime citizens who has helped a lot around this town, Mrs. Marie Moore. I am so very sorry that some people in this town want to leave the community center named after you looking like a dump. The right thing to do is give our police and fire departments and city staff a safe, non-hazardous working environment. The right thing to do is to take care of the ones we expect to keep us safe. If Proposition A fails, I would not blame one officer or firefighter if they parked all city vehicles at City Hall or the mayor's house and sue the city for hostile and unsafe working conditions. Thank you. Mayor, that is all I have. Okay. Now we'll move on to announcements from myself and other council members. Monday, October the 18th through Friday, October the 29th is early voting. Saturday, October 23rd is dumpster days, 8 a.m. until full. And most of y'all know full happens pretty quick. So get in line, get your stuff dumped. Next council meeting will be Thursday, October the 28th. Dumpster days again if you miss out on the first one or Saturday, October the 30th. Again, 8 o'clock in the morning until full. Fire department on Sunday, October the 31st will have trunk or treat at the fire station. Uh, guys, send your candy, send all your goodies. Uh, they're making a big effort to have this. Now, we also in our city are pleased to almost be there. We're not quite there yet for fiber optics. So let's keep our fingers crossed. We may not be fuss and cuss in our internet quite as much. And on November the 11th, our Rome vets will have a presentation in the Veterans Park and a parade. On November 13th, even though it's in void, it will be the Rome Veterans Group We'll have vendors, car shows, all kinds of stuff. So check out your veterans page for all the individual results. Do any of you guys have any announcements? I do, Mayor. Go for it. Um, unfortunately, I'm, I'm sad that Brady's not here because this is not the first time that I've heard from citizens around town. Uh, Mr. Peaks has been helping a lot of seniors around town, cleaning up yards, taking out trash, doing everything, and words keep coming up such as humble, willing to help, and hard worker. So if somebody could pass the message on to him, I think he is an upstanding citizen. I think a lot of people can look up to him, and he's definitely a role model. So thank you, Brady, for everything you've done. Also, the VFW is having their yearly essay program for scholarships. It's called the Voice of Democracy. Any high schoolers can earn up to $30,000 and middle schoolers can turn, earn up to $5,000. This year, the theme is America, where do we go from here? 
and it is due by midnight October 31st to any VFW. So if anybody has any middle schoolers, high schoolers looking for scholarships or other grants for uh, school, they can contact their local VFW or I can get them in contact with somebody to help them out to get that submitted. So thank you. That's all I have, Mayor. Anybody else? I have an announcement, please. Uh, I'd like to point out that Congress has designated October 28th as uh, National First Responders Day. So we'll be having a meeting in two weeks on the 28th. But if you could, you know any policemen, you know any firefighters, you know any paramedics, you might want to say thank you. Okay, well, guys, we'll look at your agenda. There are two items, I and J, that we are moving up now before we can get the presentations on not over with just because we're honoring these people. So um, we'll go to I and we'll do that one now, Marie. It has to do with discussion and any necessary action regarding a proclamation naming the Rome Community Center to the Marie Moore Educational Center. And Josh, I want to pull rank on you since I've known her for longer than anybody. I'd uh, like to read the proclamation. Joanne, I understand that you've known her a long time, but uh, this is something brought up and pushed forward, and it was Josh that uh, decided that this should be happening, and it was right, Josh that convinced. Right, giving him credit, sir, but I will read the proclamation. Uh, was, it, was it not Josh that helped write that proclamation? Where are you going? Oh, why? You're just going to ignore your mayor pro tem and the work that he's done? I'm thinking you're the one making a political issue out of this. Tell them how you got the fire department going. Well, we had uh, an auxiliary for the fire department. We had no, it was a terrible thing to say, but it, we were down to nothing. So we could form the community center, move to, we would go to the, well, it was, a, I think it was, it's had so many names, I don't know whether you call it that, but we would, the community, our, what we, now know is Lockheed, right? uh, what we now know is Lockheed. What we now know is Lockheed. Well, well, Conquer. that's right. But it's been so many names. Right. But uh, we would go down there and do their mail out. That's how we got what we got to start with. They would pay us to come down there and, and post it up. So we would go every month and do their mail out. So. From there on, we gave it to the fire department, and Aurora 
about three of the uniforms and I wrote a nice letter to them and she said, came up and said, we've never been thanked for anything before, but this is going to be better. <laughs> so, but we were, I, it was terrible to try to do something. We had everything we could find that would make a uh, Delilah. We would try it. So we got it on the road. <laughs> So Let's see how done. thankful you should be to this lady. You know? huh? Let's see how thankful they are for you. And she also served our local schools with distinction and honor. You know, the school, everybody's school loves Marie, Miss Marie. And she was instrumental in organizing our senior activities. Enhancing the welfare, growth, and development of the city of Washington. Marie, we are now therefore proclaiming that the city council of the city of Rome hereby express their heartfelt appreciation to Marie Moore for her contributions and service to the city of Rome and its citizens by renaming. For the record, we will need to take a vote on that proclamation. We have a motion to accept the moving after the second. Shannon, did you get both the second and the motion? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we are now calling for a vote. We're going to stall for just a few minutes. Okay, we have before us a motion to rename this building to the Marie Moore Educational Center. Shannon, you want to call for the votes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Now we're going to move on. We have another proclamation. Is Cynthia, you want to read it on Fire Prevention Week? Again. Okay, this is a proclamation of recognition of Fire Prevention Week. Learn the sounds of fire safety. It's October 3rd through the 9th, 2021. And we are a little late, but um, we're here nonetheless. Whereas the city of Rome, Texas, is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living in and visiting our city, and whereas fire is a serious public safety concern both locally and nationally, and homes are the locations where people are at greatest risk from fire, and whereas home fires killed more than 2,770 people in the United States in 2019, according to the National Fire Protection Association, and fire departments in the United States responded to 339,500 home fires, and whereas smoke alarms sense smoke well before you can, alerting you to danger in the event of fire in which you may have as little as two minutes to escape safely. And whereas working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in reported home fires in half. And whereas the city of Rome residents should be sure everyone in the home understands the sounds of the alarms and knows how to respond. 
whereas the City of Rome residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are more prepared and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire, and whereas the City of Rome seeks to educate residents to make sure their smoke and CO alarms meet the needs of all their family members, including those with sensory or physical disabilities, and whereas educated City of Rome residents will be better able to take personal steps to increase their fire safety from fire, especially in their homes, and whereas the City of Rome first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education, and whereas the 2021 Fire Prevention Week theme, Learn the Sounds of Fire Safety, effectively serves to remind us it is important to learn the different sounds of smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the City Council of the City of Rome, Texas, hereby proclaim October, October 3rd through the 9th, 2021, as Fire Prevention Week throughout the city and urge all the residents of the City of Rome to learn the sounds of fire safety for the Fire Prevention Week 2021. Okay, do we need to take a vote on that also, Carvin? Yes. I move we accept that proclamation. I'm sorry, I didn't. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Is it now? Now it is. Okay. I've, I've got to get used to technology, you know, on the thing. Okay. The, on the consent agenda, we have four items. The first is the minutes of the City Council regular session, September the 9th, 2021. We can accept these one by one or all in total. We have an interlocal agreement for fire protection services with Wise County. We also have an interlocal agreement for emergency services with Tarrant County. And we have a resignation from planning and zoning of Commissioner Halls, HAHS. Those are the four items under consent. We need to vote to accept all of them, or we can go one by one. Does anybody want to go one by one? I make a motion to no. accept all of them. Okay. We have a motion to accept all of them. Second. And a second down here. So, Shannon, do your thing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Now we're going to move on to our monthly staff reports and board minutes. And I think we're going to start pulling out or recognizing one department from time to time. And on this one, it will be code enforcement. So, Sean, do you want to address that? Thank you, Mayor Council. Uh, as, she is, uh, as the mayor stated that we're going to highlight some departments uh, throughout this year. This, uh, this month we're going to be doing code enforcement. Um, the mission statement for the code enforcement is to deliver acceptable services while upholding and enforcing codes and ordinances that are established or adopted to protect the public health, safety, and welfare of all residents, business owners, and visitors. 
Um, our goal in the co-enforcement uh, office is to work with citizens of Rome to achieve compliance within the first 10 days of notice of violations. Um, again, if a property owner cannot adhere to that compliance within the first 10 days, the property owner can contact the code enforcement department to establish a reasonable timeline to achieve. Our goal is to work with compliance and not violations. The last thing we want to do is to uh, find residents and all that stuff. We want to work with them uh, to achieve compliance and high grass awareness through education and all that stuff. Uh, and again, and the, the point of this, uh, we're supposed to have this PowerPoint, but apparently we don't have 360 on our <laughs> on our system yet. So uh, again, on the second point is the, uh, our goal uh, for this fiscal year is to increase education to the citizens to reduce violations, and that's through door hangers, notifications, and somebody is in violations to give them notification, uh, social media, and also quarterly newsletters, just kind of give updates to the residents what is the code violation or, or what you can do to uh, not get that not notification. Uh, the uh, TDLR uh, says code enforcement is the inspection improvement and rehabilitation of environmental hazards and public and private premises by determining the presence of fire health hazards, nuisance violations, unsafe building conditions, and violations of any fire health or regular building regulations, statutes, or ordinances. And just some quick facts about our code enforcement. We, uh, our code enforcement officer is also a public works employee, and so uh, that employee only de has dedicated about 10 hours a week uh, for a code. Uh, again, he shares duties in public works and the water and wastewater department. And in the spring and summertime, our main focus is, as you know, grass is a, is a high demand during the spring and summertime. And so uh, even though we still monitor other uh, issues and, and, and code and all that stuff, however, his main focus is just because his time restraint is a high grass. Uh, fall and winter time uh, is that when we were able to do more uh, other violations and also uh, substandard buildings. Uh, recently, we was able to do, I think, I believe 22 um, non-vehicles uh, parking on unapproved surfaces uh, because of the grass, you know, began to slow down a little bit. So he has freer time to do other violations. And then uh, just some update facts. One thing that we're beginning to do this, uh, this fiscal year is that the uh, substandard buildings, uh, council adopted $10,000 in this fiscal year to help address substandard buildings in the city. Uh, again, uh, back in April the 28th, the council adopted our new substandard building ordinance. Uh, and so with the, um, the fact that we're getting off the high grass and he has more time to start doing things, we're going to be tackling some uh, compliance issues for substandard buildings. Any questions? Anybody have any? Can, Ashley? Can one of your other employees help him? No. no. I know he is very busy yeah. because isn't he the one that also maintains our wastewater treatment plant? He is our main operator, plant operator, but all employees um, work on those treatment plants. But yes, you have to be a licensed uh, code enforcement official or building official to uh, to enforce code. So Cynthia, we did take it out of the budget to hire, correct? I'm sorry, uh, what was the question? We did not, we're not able to hire in the outside. Right, during the during the budget, um, you know, that was, I discussed with council, mayor and council, that that is a priority. However, there were so many things in the budget. Um, you know, I, I said, okay, I'll, I'll hold off on that. And I am planning on bringing that back to you all next year as a priority. Um, and we'll see where that goes, which would be a building official slash code um, officer and that would be full time. So Sean, please tell us how busy um, that that employee is. We let the council know. He's busy like all other public works employees. Well, are. I know, but <laughs> I mean, right, I mean, but, I'm sorry, we have uh, three field workers. I mean, right? Is he busier but, than Sean? Is that what you're saying? No, but I we walked with him one day. I mean, he handles our water, wastewater treatment plant. So I mean, that's a very busy job, and also to be our co-compliance officer that's what i was just yes, trying to again that's why you know being able to do 10 hours he's not able to <laughs> achieve some you know right so goals that we like to because of the, the time that it takes to do say substandard buildings correct it, 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 it would take a guy you know 160 hours to do that type of stuff yes sir so that's what i was just trying to yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. But he, I see what you're saying, but I was just trying to let the other council yeah. members know that yeah. he's he's busy just like everybody else. I understand. All right. Thank you. Thank y'all. Any more Sean. questions? All right. Appreciate y'all. Okay, there are other items on the uh, apartment heads, and anybody can pull off anything they want. We have administration, building and development, fire and rescue, municipal court, police, and public works. Does anybody care to pull off one or more of those? Okay, and the last thing is the minutes of the regular Parks and Recreation Board meeting. And it's in your packet. Okay, if we have nothing going on there, we will move on to our next thing, which is a public hearing to hear citizens' input regarding a request for a change in zoning of property being legally described as acres 0 0.367, lot 4, and PT3, block 8, subdivision Grandview Edition, otherwise known as 360 South Main Street here in Rome. The request is to change the current zoning of residential to retail. At this time, which if I can see correctly is 7-Eleven, we will open the public hearing and then we'll return to our regular agenda. Mary, sure. do we have anybody to? We do not have anybody that signed up, but I do have three responses that I received. Okay. So I was just going to read those real quick, and then I wanted to let council know that the applicant is here. So when you go into the regular session, you'll be able to ask them questions. Okay. The responses that I received was from Hanging Warner. He is in favor of the proposed request. Sarita Chalugan, she's also in favor of the proposed request. And then Shane West Shane LLC is also in favor of the proposed request. Okay, so we have three people that have sent in for a, an approval of the zoning. And council, what do y'all want to do? Ma'am, we can't take action here. This is just the public hearing. So if you want to call and see if anybody else here wants to speak on it. Okay, but they can have discussions, right? No, not during the public the hearing. That's cannot. for the regular session. Okay. Hey, I screwed up. So forget it. We'll move down a little bit later and the council can address all of this. Do we have anybody in the audience that wants to address the public hearing? Did you, I'm sorry, did you want to address the public hearing? I think they're here to answer questions during the regular session. Oh, okay. So we will now close the public hearing. It is 7.13 p.m. And we will resume our regular council meeting again at 7.13 p.m. The regular agenda, we have old business, discussion, and any necessary action on economic development and next steps on business focus group. Council Member Priest, you have the action. Where we, is that on? Can you hear me? We should have tried this earlier. Okay. All right. Just to summarize the last uh, meeting that we had, we we did discuss this uh, uh, to take preliminary action, and uh, the the summary is that um, Cynthia will basically be taking the lead on that and that uh, J Josh McCabe and myself will assist her 
as we go about uh, d doing um, the surveys, the responses, and then working toward an action committee and ultimately a steering committee. Um, we want to empower our uh, retail and commercial businesses. We we want them to take the lead in their own destiny, but I think it's critical that the city work with them and encourage them so that as um, competition and growth comes in, we want what's already here to survive. And so um, that's kind of our focus. And uh, so I guess, Cynthia, do you have any comments? We'll just need to move forward with getting those uh, surveys out. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. If anybody has any questions, uh, um, business here asked me um, for if we could help them, or help just in general, is that something that we can do as a city? With your, because they were listening to one of the previous council meetings, is that something? Or are we just helping new businesses? No, it's not. It's not just new. We, okay. we want to, uh, the existing businesses that are already here, I mean, who knows um, better the economic development challenges, uh, the things that, that they need, and we want those businesses sure. to, to survive and to thrive. And okay. that benefits everybody and everything. They have experience in Rome, okay. and they are, uh, can be, I believe, some of our best advisors. And, uh, and but re the reality is that municipalities are restricted on what they can and can't do um, in some avenues of economic development. And so it's critical that businesses uh, become involved, take some leadership for the, and, and uh, take management of what cities cannot do. Thank you. I think they're joining us tonight, so that helped. Okay, great. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Elaine's here, so now is the time. Okay, we're going to then move on to our regular agenda. I think we need a, a motion, council direction on moving forward with this. Well, we already did that last time. Mm -mm. No, you, you, you wanted me to come back with what you have before you now is just and really it, it's not much because the idea is to engage the business community to help identify that strategy in creating that economic development for the city of Rome and so um, you know we need to do the focus group and you know get everybody in so um, what are we voting on, Cynthia? What would be the, the creation of a business focus advisory group and, and appointing the two council members? Do I, using Cynthia's motion, do I hear any? One. But you can't based on what you said. So can I do that? Yes. Okay, I'll make that motion. <laughs> <laughs> do we hear a second? And Michelle seconded. Okay, Shannon, call for a vote, please. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Okay, and I'm sorry, Elaine, I thought we were already there, so now you've got your work all cut out for you. Okay, we're going to move to new business, and the first item is item H discussion and any necessary action regarding a request for a change in zoning of property being legally described as acres 0 0.367 lot 4 and PT3 block A subdivision Grandview addition otherwise known as 360 South Main Road. The request is to change the current zoning of residential to retail. And Cynthia, you want to address this and sure. what P&Z did and all that good stuff? 
All right, thank you, Mayor. P and Z met uh, last Monday night um, and considered this zoning request. It, um, as you said, it's going from residential to uh, commercial. I'm going to try to show commercial this. or retail. I'm sorry, retail, retail. Sorry. Um, so from residential to retail, and the we had some good discussion on on the PNZ, and you did have a letter from the PNZ chair um, that kind of uh, illuminated some of those conversations. If you didn't get a chance to watch it online, um, essentially right now all of Main Street, all of the properties that abut Main Street on the north, on the east and west. Um, are zoned retail except for four properties where we're talking here, or five actually, because a couple of them face Logan. Um, and so this is a request for not the southernmost, but the next to the southernmost to go from residential to retail. The PNZ's recommendation is to grant the zoning request. It, they also would like to go ahead, there's two ways zoning can happen. It can happen organically, and that's when people come in individually and request it, or it can happen when the city does it. If you look at our future land use plan, which I have pulled up, it does show all of Main Street being retail. Do you also have a map of the current zoning? Mm -hmm. the, reason I, the reason I'm asking for this and is I'm not... I'm not a proponent of spot zoning because conceptually the whole idea of the whole idea of zoning is to take an entire area and say this is the going to be the use of this uh, these homes for this area for the future. Um, I'm concerned that we're going to end up with just a single house that has one zone and then the houses around it. That's why I want to know what the current zoning is for all of the houses around it. And Cynthia, didn't the P and Z kind of lean toward what Sam is saying? Go ahead and rezone all of those properties. Right. That's what they're saying. For no, no, it, no. The recommendation of the P and Z was to grant the zoning request from single family to retail, and they also were. Uh, requesting that the council would be proactive and go ahead and take these last four properties that are not uh, that are single family and go ahead and take them to retail in alignment with the comprehensive development future land use plan. Okay, this is the current. This is what I have an issue with. So I watched the PNC and they they went back and forth and it was sorry. I watched the PNC meeting and they went back and forth. I have, I disagreed to what they said because it was five properties, but they didn't say the addresses. So I pulled it up. So the 360 Main Street and, um, but the fifth house that I'm thinking that they were trying to put in there was 150 Logan Street. It's yes, but why would it, they add 150 Logan Street? Because that's the reason why I asked you for all the addresses today, yeah. and which I can show you on the map and pull it up that we should not add someone's home and make it retail. Because if we add their home into it, then let's send out and start adding in all of the other homes to it. It's not fair. I, I understand what you're so saying. That's what so, I'm arguing about. That I don't think any of us should add in 150 Logan because the houses on that are on Main Street are retail. Because there's a house that's like 170 Russell Street, the one the vacant lot next to it. One day it's going to be re, something retail is going to go up to it. Okay, well. That person's not going to be happy with it. We shouldn't turn that house into it, you know, retail today. Um, 
there's, say for instance, there's a house that you told me about that's 165 West 1st Street. It's right next to two doors down from our old city hall. It's not zoned retail. So why do we, why should we choose to put this house, one of the houses that PNC said, and that was in the five, why should we choose to add in that fifth house into it? Which so one, Which one is the fifth house? It's in this map. So I have my computer if anybody wants to see it. There, okay, so to be clear, there are, there are four properties that abut Main Street. It's one big block, and the fifth one actually fronts, it does not abut Main Street, and it fronts Logan. So, yes, I hear what you're saying there, because right now it's all the properties that abut Main Street, other than these four, are retail. So you're talking about 300, 300 Main Street, which is the Godfrey's, which is in 300 Main Street. So it's the corner of Russell and Main, 330 Main Street, 360 Main Street that they're asking for. I, honestly, uh, Council Member Majors, I mean, they're right here. I don't, <laughs> I don't have the addresses memorized. Um, you have four you that make that larger. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so what's this on this map here? Can I, sh can you look on this map? Do you have this map on there? Map in the packet. Yes. Page. Um. On this map. Commissioner Knight, are you on the phone? So that's what I'm asking. This is going to be Logan Street. This is where it is. And this is one to be Commissioner Knight? Yes, I am. Okay. Um. And then this is 125. But I can't hear what's being talked about right now. Okay. And let me see if I can get a mic over there. I want to get really simple here, okay? Because I, I am completely confused on this. Are you wanting to, is your request to rezone one house? But just your lot. Your house, your lot, that whole planted area. That's what your request is. Okay. Commissioner Knight, how many houses are you are you and the PNZ recommending be rezoned to retail? We are think, looking at our comprehensive master plan, and it shows that everything fronting Main Street be rezoned to re, be zoned retail. That includes four of those five properties. The fifth property does not abut Main Street. Okay, so you're recommending the four houses that on this current picture that are all in yellow. I just want to make sure everybody is. I'm sorry, I got. I, I'm simple here. Yeah. Okay, it's these four lots where re, that uh, P and Z is recommending be rezoned to retail. Yes. Do any of the people in the other three lots object to being rezoned retail? That will. Uh, we did not ask, and that, just to be clear, that action would take place in the future because we would have to go through the process of the rezoning process, which means we have to notice and we would have to notify the owners. Uh, we'd have to go through that whole process, but 
what P and Z was saying is go ahead and be proactive and do it all at once versus letting it happen organically over time. It looks like this would be Thank a you. two motion item. You would um, make your motion on the um, request itself and then also make a motion on P and Z's recommendation. Uh, shall I say something? I mean, is, is there permission? Sure. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, first of all, I mean, we w would like to thank uh, every one of us for like uh, constructive comments that uh, came here. And like, I understand the concern of the councilmen and uh, the recommendation of PNG. We don't have a problem with having everything, uh, you know, like a re retail, or whatever. But like, we went as a uh, city secretary just said. Administrator just said, like, we went through the process, we paid the fee, we went through the legal uh, ways to ha make it happen. And it's not that we're going to, I mean, like, we, we have a plan of opening a business that is uh, essential for the needs of the city. We are not going to uh, bring something that's going to affect any neighbors or anything like that. So we want to work in here because she used to want a place in here and, like, she is in love with this city. That's why she want to come back, and I hope like uh, we're gonna pass this, and like we will work with the city. And I, I was very delighted to hear the new approach of engaging with business, and it will be uh, great to work with the city. And as I said, like there will be no business coming in, that's gonna affect the neighbors, and that's gonna create the concern for the city. That's all I could say. I'm looking for the market uh, needs, like what we need what we have already have and what we need like in addition to what we have that's what we're going to do and like if uh, it's approved then we will go through all the legal audiences that we have to follow there was a concern bring uh, somebody read out about the parking and whatever we will follow the audience of the city regarding parking the buildings and everything so hopefully it passes and we could work in it thank you very much if any question i'll be happy to answer thank you After finally getting clarification on which houses, what their current zoning is, what the future zoning is, what the process is, um, I'm now quite in favor of uh, pursuing rezoning all four properties to retail. I'm in favor for all four. My disagreement was not adding in the fifth house when I listened to PNC. I didn't. I was not in favor to adding in the 150 Logan Street. So I'm all in favor for keeping the houses. And I I didn't personally speak to one of the homes on Main Street, um, but one of, one of the neighbors did speak to someone else and they were okay with it. So, but I'm, I'm not personally saying it, but I mean, but that is at all the houses on Main Street. We all know that for Main and BC Pro. So, but four houses I think but not five well I think yeah just I would break it into two motions so do the first motion on on this request right now this rezoning from residential to retail and then you can come back and um, in conjunction with P and Z's recommendation um, recommend that the city actively pursue the other four that front Main Street for from single family to retail Michelle, I'm sorry, I have to get clarification. The fact that you just said the other four. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's my bad. The other three. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I hate the idea of rezoning one and then not being able to rezone the other four or five. I would have no objection to pursuing the fifth one. But of course, that would be dependent upon that person, you know, being, you know, allowing it, right? Um, I don't think there. I have no objection to the fifth house being retail. So, do you? Are you just saying let's just do theirs today? Let's send out the notices and then, and then resell them. Oh, okay. So, what are you saying? Like, I'm, I'm saying we could do all five at the same time, no. or four, but I, I don't like the idea of the spot zoning. Just changing one. 
Okay. Well, we have to do it in two separate ones because we have to go through the zoning process. And that I, I understand. You only have one property up for consideration and changing tonight, and, and that's the applicant. I think all the, the city administrator is asking is for direction on the other lots. Does the council want the city administrator to initiate changes on those lots? But you can't do anything on those tonight. We haven't gone through the process and we don't even have any applications on those other lots. Understood. So I'll go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Michelle. Um, I was just wondering because you are against the spot zoning. What what is the disadvantage to the one house being retail residential? I mean, what? Well, I can let the lawyers you know talk specifically about spot zoning, but I mean, this wouldn't necessarily be spot zoning. You have a current land use plan that shows retail and these as single family you have a future land use plan that shows them all retail that abut main street so um, right now in all actuality regardless of whether what is actually zoned you have mixed use all up and down main street we all know that there is retail along main street and there are homes along main street so even though it may be zoned retail you have legal non-conforming uses of that within the retail so for all practical purposes it's all very similar it's all mixed use which is what our comprehensive development plan speaks to in the future is it's mixed use recognizing that this is old town Rome and that you have you know these old homes um, that are on Main Street, but Main Street's a main thoroughfare, and so you also have residential that are there as well. And so, um, for all practical practical purposes, it's all residential and single family. Yeah, I feel like we can, if we change that one home lot to retail, it's not going to affect anything else, and it's kind of like it's doing it organically at this point there's homes around it but I mean you've got to you've got that comprehensive development plan that that's all all retail so I I don't see a problem with changing that one home to retail and having the other ones I'm with you you've sold me <laughs> Elaine well I would also like to say you know as people come on the City Council things become evident that there has been a lot of planning and a lot of um, investigative and engineering work, for example. And so there, there was, when I first came on the council, you know, it, there's a learning curve to know what has happened, how much work has been involved, what is that research. And it's not always apparent uh, to, to the newer members. And how do I know that? Because I was new. And, you know, and so. There was a plan that was developed um, that looked at, through planning and zoning, what areas might need to be rezoned in order to, to uh, embrace the vision of how Rome could grow and be used. And then later on, the master plan came about, and that work that had already been done, with planning and zoning, and it was done with, with an engineering company, um, they incorporated that in, into this. So now we move forward and we know that there's a thoroughfare steering committee that's working. And they too have embraced these other two things, other two research projects and visionary projects that have taken place. So that being said, I just want you to know that that's out there for us to review, look at, anybody uh, that's interested can go back and look at that. But for tonight, in fairness to everything that has happened with planning and zoning, with the owners of the property, I'd like to make the motion that we move forward as recommended by our planning and zoning committee uh, for this one property. And we probably need to vote on it first before we move forward forward with the other three properties to investigate that process. 
So I'll make a motion. <laughs> Anybody second? Okay. Council member Ty did. Um, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries unanimously. So did you want to make that second motion? Now the second motion is to begin the process, I suppose, uh, to look at uh, rezoning those other three properties from residential to retail. Be, before we go through that motion, I believe our attorney advised we wouldn't need to make an emotion. We just need to provide direction to city staff to move forward with the investigation and the work of that. Is that correct? I'm okay with either approach. I don't think it okay. requires legally a motion, but if you want to make a motion and formalize it, then that that's okay. Elaine, do you mean three the other three properties or four? There's only there's only three that face Main Street, and that that's what we're talking about. So you want to exclude the other one on Logan? I think the my description of the property would be it faces front of the house faces Logan, but the side of the house is toward Main Street. And well, so would it be, be, be the properties of budding Main Street? And that would be three, not four. OK, yes. that's that's my motion is for those three <laughs> properties. Thank you. We have a second. Sure. OK, OK, which one seconding? Sorry, I will. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? No. Motion carries four to one. Okay, moving right along. If I can find my place here, I think we're going to K. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Discussion and any necessary action. No, we regarding a resolution designating an administration project delivery service provider to complete project implementation for the American Rescue Plan, Plan Act, ARP Act, funding administered by the U.S. Department of Treasury, other federal or state agencies, and authorizing the city administrator to negotiate pricing and execute a contract. Cynthia, this be you. Okay, uh, Mayor and Council Members, you um, have the background information there for your reference. What you have uh, before you tonight is an, an RFP. We went out for an RFP. We got um, one response and we had a committee uh, made up of the mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and City Secretary. You have the scoring in your packet. Um, so, I'm looking for page 75 um, is the scoring on that. Um, so, I'm looking for direction on being able to move forward with um, onboarding a grant consultant to help with the reporting. As I stayed in there, there's basically three main parts to the um, ARPA funding. I've done extensive work on the first two, um, and this would be uh, the reporting. It is over four years. It's annual for any use, um, and I'm here to answer any questions. We do have um, grant works representatives here tonight if you have any questions of them. This, this process, just as reference, is very similar to the the process that we had with the Texas Community Development Block Grant. We had we sent out five uh, RFPs. We advertised it was on the website, and um, we received one. I'd like to make a motion to authorize city administrator to negotiate pricing and execute contract with with the winning bid grant works. Elaine, did you have? I just had a couple of questions. Should if I we can get a second and then okay. answer questions. Okay. 
I just would like to clarify um, because it is this is grant funding is that correct yes okay um, it's my understanding that these reports uh, uh, that they will do the reporting that is critical to the, the, the provider of the grant and so it with their professional expertise they make sure that we do that in a timely fashion and that the the information that is required so that we don't get into a situation where we're non-compliant with with that reporting correct is that is that that's what that's we're doing exactly here? right that's exactly right so you know it's great that the federal government and, and the state government this in this case this is the federal government um, are willing to you know extend these funds um, in light of COVID is what this is kind of the second round we did the CRF fund um, first um, but there's always um, there's always strings attached and so it's uh, you have to make sure that you're dotting those I's and crossing those T's so that you know two years three years down the road they don't do a claw back and say well you didn't do this um, the other thing and you know grant works I can let you guys come up and talk about your expertise in this area but we um, we just had a recent situation I'm just gonna um, talk about with the community development block grant um, and the PIF projects that we um, submitted to the Texas Water Development Board, um, we got some good news um, on that grant, on the uh, CBDG fund grant. Um, however, they had some questions. And so GrantWorks was like, okay, we know what their questions are. We know what they're looking for because it's how you answer those questions. Um, and so they helped us make sure that we were presenting that project in the best light to make sure that it kept moving forward um, for funding. So that just happened two to three weeks ago. Um, so that's the value of having them on board um, or, or any company on board to help with this process. It, it's uh, another question is without that proper response, I mean, we not just we but in anybody that takes grant money could be recalled on some of that if they if we don't report professionally and timely and all of that kind of stuff is that correct oh, are you like they could take the money back clawbacks it, yes. yes yes that's exactly okay true. I just wanted to be sure that we all understood the importance of, of this particular uh, uh, item that we're discussing yes, um, I'm reading through the recommendation here and I just want to for my own clarification make sure that what I understand is what everyone else understands um, this grant this uh, applied for to get the American Rescue Plan Act um, we're trying to get uh, money trying to find a, a team to apply for this grant to represent us and it's so the city of Rome would receive four hundred fifty seven thousand one hundred sixty five dollars well we already have done that so I've already like I said it was broken down into three parts I've already done one and two and you guys have already authorized all of that and so this is just in the future the reporting now initially I will say this is the federal government the first report was due October 31st. They've now pushed that off to April. Okay. I'm reading through here and I'm trying to understand exactly what you're asking for right now. Okay. Because, no offense, I've heard a lot of talk, but I haven't heard a statement of this is our objective. So can you give me one, maybe two sentences max? Okay. Of yes. this is what we want. <laughs> Yes, I am looking for a grant management consultant to help us do the reporting, and that's what they will do with this contract. Okay, um, in the second paragraph on your summary background, um, it says that the eligible uses for the funding are fairly broad to meet pandemic response and to rebuild a stronger, more equitable economy including expenditures that support water, sewer infrastructure, technology, and public health support. Um, 
that sounds like that could be used for anything. Yes, but there's a 52-page document that is called the Interim Final Rule, and they're going to be doing a final rule. So it's, yes, it is broad, and it's much broader than the first round of funding. Yes. So we're really just looking at, give us the money, we'll figure out what we're going to do with it later. No, you guys have already, it's on the second page, you've already proved those uses. And these uses can um, meet the eligible uses. You've already taken action. We've already got the money. It's in the bank. The first tranche. We have one. We, they release it in two years. We got the first year, $228,000 roughly. So it's in the bank. We are funding OpenGov, this sound system, and then police and fire have some items. Okay, what confused me was the title that says eligible uses, not this was already decided. Okay, uh, yeah, I was just trying to give some background information as a reminder. This is where we've been, but where we're at now is the grant administration help for staff. Okay, 140000 for admin. Uh, STW and Open Gov. Okay, I'm, I, I remember and I'm very familiar with that. The ten thousand dollars for the cameras, the TV, the speakers, so that we could do all that. Yes. Okay. Um, data analysis. Okay, the police. Excellent. Watch guard components and cameras. Let's see if this. Oh. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, again, the title eligible uses is what confused me there. I apologize. Yeah, I, I was just trying to get some background where we were, so that may have been confusing. Thank you. Ms. Cheryl. But we, GrantWorks is just doing the next phase of this, is correct? Because you've already done everything. Right. What is the, what are the next phases? What do they have, do y'all? The next phase is the reporting. So this is what you guys have authorized us to spend this money on, and the second phase as well was going to be water, wastewater. But you have to then report. And so as any use, we report once a year. And that's what, I mean, they're going to be doing can, all that, making sure that we're reporting right. Can they? Yes, like, please. I don't know, if are y'all doing other cities at all doing this particular thing? Um, yes, we are. Uh, the American Rescue Plan Fund is for 1,200 cities in Texas, and um, we are not um, working with 1,200, but we're working with a bunch. And that the um, service that, that Grant Works offers, we would offer, obviously, as the city administrator said, for um, reporting, project development, project management close out. Uh, the reporting time is for non-entitlement cities is annually. The first report is due in April. The money has to be obligated towards projects by 12-31-2024 and the projects have to be completed and the money spent by 12-31-2026. So typical grant situations are 12, 24 months, some 36 months, but this is a project that could string out for 60 months. So the um, Grant Works has formed an entirely separate American Rescue Plan uh, team that has been on this since the act was passed on March the 11th. So um, I, I think from our vantage point, it would be advantageous to the city to have a, another pair of eyes looking over your shoulder on your projects that has been looking at the guidance from day one. While you're thinking, I'm sorry, I need to have uh, Mayor Pro Tem McCabe repeat your motion for this, please. The motion was to authorize the city administrator to negotiate pricing and execute the contract with the winning bidder, Grant Works. Thank you. 
did you get a second? Council member um, Ty seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries four to one with council member majors voting against. Okay, we're moving right along. Now we're going to hell. And Cynthia probably needs to just describe this to us a little better. Decision any necessary action regarding Wise County Appraisal District 2022 Board of Director election. And I don't, Cynthia knows all this. We don't get one vote for every person. We get a small amount of votes that can go toward this administrator, or we can put ours with somebody else, or we can pass, or we can nominate somebody. So, Cynthia? So. Well, that's it. Now, here's the thing. I was not sure what the history of this council has been. Um, you know, the Wise County Appraisal District has these elections every year, every two years. So I don't have to look at that. Um, right now, what they are looking for is, do you want to nominate somebody to be on the ballot? And if you do, you would enter that name now, but it's due tomorrow. Um, and if not, um, at when that ballot comes out, everybody's going to vote. Now, the city of Rome, you'll see in that packet, you only have 29 votes. ISDs have 1,000 votes. Wise County has 1,000 votes. So it, unless you were to really have somebody and you had some cities lined up, um, you know, it's probably a long shot. However, I didn't want this to come in and me not bring it to your attention. So I wasn't sure if you guys had taken action on anything like this before. Okay, and I just want to make sure that you didn't want to, because sure as anything, I wouldn't have brought it to you, and you would have said, "How come you didn't bring that to me?" So, if you don't want to take any action and vote, uh, put somebody on on the ballot for people to vote on, then you just leave it. You don't take action on it. Um, at some point, when they have the election, uh, it's in November or December, I believe, they'll come back and say, "Do you want to throw your 29 votes? Where do you want to throw them?" And then at that point, we can look and see if there's anybody, for heaven's sake, we do not want on or somebody we want on. Our measly 29 votes, not going to go very far, but at least we have a choice. Has, has the city ever done that before? In years past, if I remember correctly, I think we've just looked the other way because we didn't have enough votes to even... Count, basically, Decatur and Bridgeport, it's by population. And, you know, when they're 1,600, give or take, we don't get very many votes allowed. It is, it's, you know, do you want to partner with other cities and throw your votes behind a candidate? Um, in smaller cities, some, whoa, we have a big flying here. Some yeah. smaller cities will sometimes do that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it takes work. I mean, to see if the smaller cities have joined together before, it doesn't sound like they have. So um, I just wanted to bring this to your attention. Well, if we're not going to do anything, Carmen, we can just move right along, right? That's yes. correct. Okay. And that's where we're going. Okay. Now, go to L where we just were There's on the thing. So now we're going to M, discussion and update of West Waste Water Treatment Plant and upcoming bond, which the bond is not what's on the ballot. This is another bond. Cynthia? Yes, Mayor, you wanted this on the agenda just to give the council an update. And so this is just a reminder that um, with the water wastewater plans, we have, with your authorization, we submitted three projects to the Texas Water Development Board. And what the Texas Water Development Board is, is they give low rate interest loans. Um, we did have one that came through our long-term water source, which is the $26 million project um, that was selected and we're invited to um, apply for that. So we're working on taking that forward and if we 
are selected, then we would come back to you and say, okay, we've got this, what, where do you want to go with that? Now that is not the two near-term projects that we have on board for the revenue bonds on the water wastewater side. So there's two projects. Unfortunately, they were not selected. Now all that means is instead of maybe a 1.45 interest rate, we're going to have a two-point interest rate. Um, so if we're not selected, it doesn't mean that we can't go forward. We were just, that was an alternative funding, if you will, to try to drive that price down and keep it down. Um, as a reminder, the sewer rates, the um, water sewer rate study that we had and the sewer rates that went into effect in September um, were predicated on the fact that they were going to pay for this revenue bond for these two projects that have water components to it and uh, the rehab on the West Wastewater Treatment Plant. Um, as another part of it, the Community Development Block Grant that we've applied for that is moving forward and is looking good, um, that we're going to be very competitive for that grant. It was $350,000. Um, that is on the water side. It, is a smaller component of that. So it's another bite off of that apple to drive that price down. So that's where we're at. We have already begun conversations with John Martin at Hilltop Security um, and working with our engineers. Of course, Sean, um, he's here. He can answer more questions if you have more questions on that. Um, we were envisioning that we would um, get this all together, wait for the PIFs to see what happened, um, and then we would start getting that revenue bond ready to go um, to the market. And um, then that's where John comes in and he looks at the market and what the uh, financial temperature is and, and when we should actually go out. Um, and sell those bonds and shop those bonds for that project. So that's probably, you know, three to six months is the timing on that. Um, and I think, again, it dovetails nicely with the community development block grant on the water side as well. So um, there's still an out, very out chance that we, one of the other two near term PIFs um, that represent the revenue bond pro project that you guys authorize could still be selected, but it's on a very outside chance. One of them was ranked 41 and one was ranked, I believe, in the 60s. Um, the long-term water source for the 26 million was ranked 18, and it did get selected to move forward. Does anyone have any questions for Cynthia? Or Sean? Sean, here. I'm sorry, and Sean. I, we have Kyle on I the phone. I can't see Sean back there. He's hiding. And Kyle you know? is here as well. Right. So the long term, the long term project was approved for this. We this were invited low interest, to yes. mm -hmm. low interest rate. Yes. But the other two, the ones that are kind of a priority for us that are like right now, we're still going to go ahead with those, correct? Yes. I feel like that with those need to be done before the long term. Oh, you know, like they yes. need to be started. Yes. Um, I mean, that was just, again, if we could get a lower interest rate, uh, 1.5 or maybe below one, um, great. And then we would move forward and it would be less interest, right? Which is, you know, when you're talking five to five million, five point six million dollars adds up. Or if we go forward, which we're planning on with revenue bonds, it might be 1.45 or 2 percent, um, depending on what the market says at that given time. Okay. Anyone else? Michelle, yeah, thanks for questions. <laughs> we appreciate all Cynthia's efforts on this. And, you know, once we get to the point, it will not have to go on a ballot again. It's a revenue bond. It's different. And the council will be the one to push it forward. So y'all stay tuned. Okay, N is discussion and necessary action relative to the November 2nd bond election canvassing. And there's all kinds of good limitations. You can't do it before a certain date. You can't do it after a certain date. And Cynthia has come up with the date she's recommending. 
Which this is actually city secretary's item. Okay, so is Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the um, canvassing period ends on November 15th, and I would like to recommend that we wait until the 15th because, yes, the election is on November 2nd, but as we all know, the deadlines for overseas ballots, mail-in ballots, and whatnot, and if the county has any issues, if they have a large turnout, it might take them a little bit longer to get us our reports. We did in the past, a couple months ago, we, since we are closed on um, Veterans Day, November 11th, council did vote to move their meeting to the third Thursday, the 18th between Veterans Day and Thanksgiving. But we wanted to bring this forward since the canvassing needs to be done on the 15th, we wanted to give you the option and we are recommending that we just have one meeting on Monday the 15th. But we could canvass on the 15th only and then still have our meeting on the 18th. It's up to you what you prefer. And for those of you that may not remember, canvassing is a very short, quick thing. So we would have time for a full meeting. Yes, ma'am. Do I hear a motion what we do? Uh oh. So are you making a motion we can you cut meet early? It seems reasonable to just say if we're going to do it on Monday, let's just do the whole meeting on Monday. Is that is the any, consensus of everybody? Does anyone I second object? that. I, I uh, haven't I, made a motion. I'm, oh, sorry. No, go ahead and make the motion. I make a motion that we have the meeting on the 15th. Anybody want to second that? Count Mayor Burr, Tim McCabe, just second. Oh, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, now we're moving to item O, discussion and any necessary action regarding making it easier for the citizens to attend meetings remotely. Councilman Eason, that's your action item. Yes. Um, the, the, the whole point of this is executive session. Um, whether we have the executive session at the beginning of the meeting, to the end of the meeting, things happen before and after, okay? And it's terribly inconvenient, people that come to the meetings. Uh, I see Mrs. Hoppenrath has come to the meeting. I'd love for her to stay and, and come to all the meetings. Um, but the thing is, we're going to go into executive session. Looks like it could be a while. And I don't want her to just sit here and twiddle her thumbs, right? Because that's what we've done in the past. So that if she wants to know what actions are being taken, then she's got to sit. And she's got to wait. And she's got to wait. And she's got to wait. The people that are online, um, I believe that the meeting ends up being killed. The go to meeting dies. Right. We just turn off the recording and then we come back to it. So, yes, we stop it. Right. They yes, we stop it. And so how do the people that are online know? Okay? Correct. So my concern is I want people to I want it to be easier for people to get everything that happens in the meeting. Now, um, I remember the first time I went to a Northwest ISD meeting, um, I saw the agenda and the agenda was really simple. At five thirty, the uh, school board met in executive session. Period. That's what they did at 5:30. At 6:30, they started their open meeting. One of the agenda items was to take action on what had what had happened during the executive session. Okay, that way we can meet. We have our executive session, and we're not we're not ever going to ask our citizens to just sit and twiddle their thumbs and wait for us. It makes it easier for them to attend in person. It makes it easier for them to attend online. Um, now, it is going to be an inconvenience for us to have to come here at 530. I'm going to have to take off work early, okay, to get here. Um, I don't know, you know, how it's going to inconvenience others, but I'm more than willing to get here at 530. And just, I'm just brainstorming here as to when we could do it, okay? So I, I, I'm really looking for discussion here before I try to make any kind of a motion. 
I think 530 would be good. Um, I, I am concerned that I might, something might happen at work and I might get delayed. And then that hour earlier, I might miss the meeting, but um, we're not going to have executive session every single meeting, I wouldn't think. We, I mean, we haven't. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that that's a good idea. Except for probably, you know, if we had it at 5.30 today, it, we would probably still be in there right now. <laughs> Maybe even 6. Um, might be. Yeah. Um, Josh, what would this do to your work schedule? Um, I would still be able to make it. I'm out of four every day unless something changes. But uh, like Michelle said, not everybody can do that. And even supposedly being out of four, something may come up with somebody trying to get here. But I'm with Sam on this one. I think uh, it does make a great idea. There's several other cities that do have their executive session beforehand. That way, everybody present knows what goes on out of that executive session. So. I think we could get that out of the way and move on with the regular meeting. I, I think it's a, but I don't know if an hour would work for us. I mean, we could go in for an hour and then come back out, you know, at 6.30, see if we can not, you know, if it's one item off or two items, but some of our executive sessions go on for hours. So... I mean, at least we can get a couple off, you know, off of the items. Maybe so. we can all start showing more discipline and <laughs> yeah. Do so it in an I hour. think hey, I'm available. I've open availability, so I'm I make a motion if everybody if it works. What what is the motion? I make a motion that or, or let's discuss it more. I could be here at five o'clock or five thirty, whatever. Cynthia? Um, I don't have this knowledge, but Chief uh, Fitch does. So do you want to, so as I under, I mean, you could maybe split the difference and do it at 6. No, actually, I think the reason we went to 6.30 is because Kenny Crenshaw wanted to go to bed. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> we I wanted was, to shorten the meeting, and that's I, I why. Was a lot of that was the, no, the, the compromise was at that time when we went from 7 to 7 to 6.30 was to try to shorten the meeting, and then we the council decided to start at 6.30 and do the executive session at 6.30 because of the concern that residents wouldn't be able to get here at 7. I mean, at 6.30. So that's why we moved to 6.30. Can we start executive session at 5? That's pretty early. 5.30. That, that's pretty early. Okay, and I, mean, I, I think what... I think what Shannon just suggested was executive session at 6 and then have the regular meeting start at 7. That is a possibility, yes. You can I do actually, that. I like that better. I like it. 5.30. I think executive session at 5.30 just gives us enough time and you're saying meet executive session at 5:30 and then the meeting at 7 I think meeting at 6:30 still at 7 it's late isn't that late for citizens all of our meetings used to start at 7 and each board has changed their they followed council and council went to 6:30 but then PNZ starts at 6 now, and then P uh, Parks was 6.30, I mean 6, and then now they're going to 6.30. Well, we're not locked in. We can try it. If it doesn't work for two or three months, we can regroup and change the time if needed, you know. So and I'd like to make a motion that we have executive session at 6 and our meetings start at 7. I made the motion for six and seven. If you don't want to vote for it, you don't. Councilmember McCabe seconded that. Just, just a reminder, Abel? for procedure okay. standpoints, the, the meeting has to actually be called to order at six, and then you will immediately go into executive session. And then when you come out of executive session, if you still have time, you'll basically just take a recess till 
till the seven o'clock hour comes around. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries four to one. So, okay, let me understand when I'm to be here next. When we have an executive session on the agenda, we will start at 6 p.m. Okay, but we have to start as a regular session. Yes, we will start as a regular session and go into the executive session agenda. Uh -huh. And then the regular meeting for uh, posting time will be 7 p.m. And do we have a game plan if the executive session doesn't end? Do we automatically stop it at 6.30 or 7? Um, we keep going. We finish what we're doing. We can say on the agenda that the regular session starts at 7 p.m. or immediately following the executive okay. session. Yeah. So uh, that means we, we can we'll start at 7 or if it, the executive session goes past 7 o'clock, then you can start the regular session after. Okay. I, I like that. I just would hope we could get out of executive session, but we haven't seemed to be able to do that much. So, Shannon, would you please amend my motion to include the caveat that you just added? Or immediately following. Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, the last item on the regular meeting is P, discussion and any necessary action regarding a vehicle take-home policy. Council Member Majors, this was your uh, uh, Yes, Mayor. Actually, I'm going to ask... Oh, sorry. It's not close enough to me. Um, yes, actually, I'm going to ask Chief Fitch to speak on this regarding um, the take-home of the vehicle. Councilperson Majors, thank you. I was asked to speak on this. I'm not 100% sure on the direction, but I think it's more of an explanation. So at this time, I'll explain. I can't speak for Chief Devis and the police department, but as far as the fire department, we have a policy. And that policy is an on-call policy, which I do have. And then if anybody would like a copy, we can get a copy through the city administrator. But basically what I'd like to explain is, I keep hearing the word take home, and I've seen it in a community as a take home program. And I don't have a take home program. I don't allow any of my members to take a vehicle home because when you talk about a take home program, you're talking about incentive to an employee. The system I have is an on call system that's an incentive for the community. And that incentive is based off of response times it's based off a of certification of certified people. It's based off equipment. It's based off apparatus. So I think that's the biggest thing that we have to understand is there's take home programs that give the incentive to the person taking it home, whether it be in lieu of a car allowance, things like that. Whereas the system we have is based off an incentive for the community as far as response times and like we mentioned. Uh, I'd be glad to take any questions. I love questions. I wish people would ask me more questions, especially on things like this. But just to be clear, we do not have a take home program in the Rome Fire Department. And if you're out and about, God forbid you get to go on vacation, then the next in the line would take a vehicle whatever the appropriate one was, maybe to their residence, is that what I'm hearing? But that would only be if that situation garnered that. So, for example, I mean, just because I go out of town doesn't mean somebody's going to take a vehicle for on-call. Okay, it's available right. there for them, but on-call is based off of who's in town, uh, what the call volume's like. For example, you know, everybody gets caught up, and I see all the pictures on Facebook being the squad. Well, nobody ever took pictures of the brush truck that's been on call. There's been an engine on call. Nobody's taken pictures of those. So it depends on the situation. If we're heavy into grass fire season, then that person who takes that vehicle for that 12-hour period or that six-hour period, it's conducive to what that might be for that call that for that time. 
So if we're heavy into grass fire season, it might be a brush truck. So it's all based off of, of like I say, response time. It's based off the calls that we could have at the time. Uh, it's based off of if I've got two EMTs up here on shift, but I'm a paramedic. I mean, wouldn't you want me to help the guys out on shift if I'm a paramedic? So that's the reason for the all call. It's to it's to make sure we're covering all of our bases, you know, and and being able to take care of the situations that could arise due to the situations, certification levels, due to the manpower or lack thereof manpower. So I guess one of my questions, uh, Chief Fitch, is resident X sees a brush truck at somebody's house. That's a decision you have made that's best for the citizens. Yes, and it's based off a of policy. It's yeah. not an incentive that that person got to right. save gas money <laughs> or save wear and tear on his vehicle. I mean, if we're getting to that point and we're saving wear and tear on three miles on a personal vehicle, we're probably in the wrong line of business. Yeah. Um, it's based off of the need for the community to reduce risk. And, it, and that, like I said, there's so many factors there. It's not... I mean, I've got actually a policy on it. I mean, it, and this policy has been in place for almost a couple of years now. So this is not something that we just made up and that, that we're allowing people just to take vehicles home because I take pride in the community and the city allowing us to have the equipment we have. So that's why I make these policies. But the policy is based off on what's best for the community. It's not based off an incentive for the members to be able to take something home because they did good one week or sure or, or not and it, just because I go out of town doesn't mean they're going to take the vehicle home okay that was one question yeah. too. you know um, questions I have gotten from residents from time to time right I wish I would get some of those questions well we may send them your way no, okay seriously I think we're getting there right but and we I, do I do appreciate too. you having a policy that supports what you're saying right and, and I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. Like I say, I have an open door policy on all my council reports. It says I have an open door. Come ask me. But that's, I think we can't get confused on the take home, which is an incentive for a member or an employee, whereas this is on call and this is for the incentive to take care of the community. And that's what I'm here to do is take care of the community. And I think that was probably a misuse of words. I think what you're saying is what the People want to know, quote, take home. How, right. how does Susie get to take home? You right. know, something. So, if you can explain, so this week, for instance, that we have seen um, that your wife posted yesterday that there was only two. Did she post yesterday? <laughs> yes. I, she, I, I don't, no, keep, I don't no. keep up anymore. No, but it was amazing the pictures that she posted um, that there was only two firefighters on duty. Yes. The the um, uh, the 18 Miller accident. I mean, it was so sad yes. to see. But that you were saying that that if the vehicle was po if at um, say a business, yes. it was easy for you to get there. Well, a good um, a good example. We yep. didn't have a couple of people. We didn't have a couple of people on shift because, and just to take one step back. I know you all approved shift pay, and we do have guys on shift, but you have to remember the money that was allocated is not an everyday allocation. So we don't have two guys on shift every day, so we're filled in by volunteers. Because kind of give you an example, if you have two shifts per day for a week, that's 14 shifts. Well, if I go over 10 shifts a week, I'll run out of money before the end of the budget, and I don't want to do that. So we don't have full coverage every day. But now we fill in with volunteers, which normally we have no problem. It's not uncommon for us to get, we usually average five to six volunteers on a call, which is great. I'd put those numbers up to a lot of departments. Um, but in cases like this, I'll give you a great example. Um, we had a call in Bywell the other day. And we happened to have a vehicle on call down at a warehouse off of uh, 4841. It took us two minutes to get to the call. If we would have had to come all the way back to the station and get a vehicle because we were the only two guys around, it would have taken us 10 minutes to get to the call, and it was a medical call. And we had all the EMS equipment with us. And that's the other thing when you base those on-call vehicles, you have to make sure you base it off the equipment that's needed for what you think is 
kind of right at the time, whether it be a grass fire, car wrecks. Car wrecks, we usually take an engine. So it, that's the things we base it on. But you're right. The other day we had two guys for, uh, we actually had two 18-wheeler jackknives. Um, so in that case, since we only had two of us, which is unusual, we have, we have a couple of guys out right now and things like that. It's an unusual case for us to have two. But we actually had one of the vehicles on call, which was a squad, so one of the members went straight to the call. I jumped in my personal vehicle, came up and got an engine so then we could block properly on the highway. So there's little things we have to work out and we look at and we view. I hope that answered some of your questions. No, it does. And it, so to help with what we, the questions that we are getting, what we are seeing, it helps with what reason why I put it on the agenda tonight. Um, so... Thank yeah. you so much for I mean, speaking. No. Be honest with you, I, you know, my truck's comfortable. I love my <laughs> truck. I drive my truck anywhere. But right. sometimes it's not for the best of the community Correct. if I'm in a personal vehicle when, when I need to have that coverage. Yes. No, I think it's wonderful. I'm, but I think it's, you know, with you taking the fire, you know, the brush truck or whatever, I understand that we are short staffed. Um, taking it to you. Well, and I think you got to look at it. We're not necessarily short staff. The problem is, is in the volunteer world, it's down over 30% with retention and recruitment in the volunteer world. It's just hard to get volunteers nowadays. I mean, every department struggles with it all over the United States. I mean, I think it's within seven years, I think it's down 30% on volunteers. It's just tough right now just to to get people to volunteer. So to be able right. to have those type on call programs just help us out. Now we're doing everything we can to bring in new recruits and things like that. But also there's a point where we're limited on equipment. I mean, I can bring in a hundred people, but if I only got 20 sets of gear, I'm not doing myself any good. So, so those are things we're looking at too. Well, thank you. Chief Fitch? Yes. Um, I don't mean to take away any of your originality, but I grew up in Dallas and it was very common to see the uh, a Dallas engine, a Dallas fire engine at a uh, grocery store because they have 24-hour shifts and they have to eat. And instead of just sending a guy to the grocery store, they would take an entirely staffed engine and go to the grocery store. Frequently, I've been to Walmart and seen a Fort Worth fire, uh, fire engine. And you go inside and you see a half dozen firefighters. The thing is... They're on duty. They're getting food for their 24-hour shift. But the thing is, if they get a call, they're going to drop the food that they've got, put it, you know, set it down. They're going to go get on their engine, and they're able to make that call so that wherever they are. Now, the uh, the oddest one I ever saw was uh, my wife and I were at the park, and we saw the Dallas Fire Department, a whole bunch of guys playing tennis. And uh, they had their engine in the parking lot. And they were ready because... The thing is, if you've taken care of all your work at the firehouse, you still got a 24-hour shift. You've got to, you're going to be there for. I guess nobody came by the park Saturday at 8:30 in the morning, because there was nine of us out there. Of course, we had a fire engine just in case, but there was nine of us out there playing basketball, trying to get the camaraderie going and get that excitement going with the crews. Excellent. Yep, I saw I saw them down there playing, have a great time. I think Chief was probably yeah. humped over a little yeah, bit. Yeah, if you see me walking but, real uh, gingerly, I'm a their sore. their trucks were aimed the right way down the street, ready to go. Their gear was piled up next to the truck, so at any moment they jump yeah. in and take off. So I was glad to see y'all out there, and hopefully some citizens stop by to play games with y'all or whatever. Yeah, too, so. and and I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm not trying to add anything different to Rome. I'm not trying to do anything special. I'm just trying to do what the community needs. And if that requires us to be ready for any type of emergency, whether it be an on-call program, whether it be, you know, retention and recruitment and things like that, I'm just trying to do the best we can for a growing city. Any other questions? Oh, uh, Saltair. Yes, sir. <laughs> Frequently in my job, carries me up to the sheriff's office to do various things. I was up there the other day in dispatch, and the dispatchers agreed, and also the deputies that were in there. I don't remember exactly how it came up, but I was told by Wise County deputies 
by dispatchers that as far as volunteer departments go in Wise County, ours is the best. And we have the most people that come to the calls. Um, a lot of departments, you're lucky to even have anybody show up. They have to do mutual aid or call a nearby department or anything like that. These guys are excellent. They are always there for us, every single call. Thank you. Can I interject how far we've come with that? Don't ask my age, but many years ago, a neighbor was burning trash. We were allowed to do that in the town. And she calls and says, can your husband come help? because I may not be able to get it out. Well, he went over and they got it out, but she, he said, call the fire department, because he didn't know if he could get it out. So we called the fire department, and I truly forgot that we had called them. Phone rang, and it was, quote, the fire chief's wife, which, you know, back then you knew everybody. She said, Joanne, did y'all get the fire out? We can't find the key to the fire truck. <laughs> so, you know, Chief Fitch has moved us a long way, you know. Well, personally, um, and this is my own personal opinion, but I am proud to work along the, alongside these guys every day. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you so much. Thanks. But, uh, council members, I wanted to, uh, I'm in favor for the vehicles being at the warehouse. Um, I w would like to leave off with since um, uh, our police chief DeBus is not here right now, I think we could we can discuss that at a later date. Um, but for the take home vehicle, it's not take home vehicle um, for him to drive the vehicle to a warehouse. I think we should allow it wherever it might be in the city. How I don't know how you tell me how we we should say it. Well, right. I mean, and I'm not going to belabor. Our, I'm not going to belabor policy. the point. I mean, it's not. We don't have a take-home vehicle okay. policy. We have an on-call, like like Chief Fitch. So Chief Sorry. Debus is is taking his home. He's on call. And I would point out when he first got hired, a week into it, we had the officer involved shooting, and he hadn't taken it home at that point, and he was trying to get to the site and there were so many perimeters set out there he was new he was in an unmarked car and he it took him extra time to get to that site and so it's not um it's not it's only on the police side it's only the chief that has oh. the uh, that's on call 24 7. can we table this until he's here and talk about it at a later date i think that that one i would like to see him be here for that that's well okay. yes i mean I, i'd like to get more information on what you're looking for yes, so he can yes. come prepared yes like the uh chief fish okay prepared. and i think we could just add it to the next agenda we wouldn't really have to yeah add it. Table it. yes just add it to yeah. the next agenda so okay sounds like we need to go to executive session yep sounds good okay i hate to say this but we are ending a regular council meeting and it is 8:33. And we're moving into executive session. So um, let's. We do, for the record, need to state which sections we're going under. Right. We are going under to executive session, section 551.071, 551.071. Five five one point oh seven four, and we also have listed five five one point oh eight seven as needed. We are now moving to executive session. Y'all take a five or ten minute break. Mm -hmm. We're gonna run people.